In part A, I just need to write down the inequality shown on the number line. Note there's an open circle, so x is strictly bigger than minus 3. And for part B, I need to solve this inequality. So 4y minus y is less than or equal to 8 plus 13. So 3y is less than or equal to 21. So y is less than or equal to 7. In question 2, I'll start with the left-hand side, which is 5, 2 over 3, minus 2, 3 over 4. This is equal to 5, 8 over 12, minus 2 and 9 over 12. I'll convert the first one into 4 and 20 over 12, minus 2, 9 over 12. And this gives me 2 and 11 over 12, which is equal to the right-hand side. In part A, I'll just put these values, these x values on the calculator and get the corresponding y values and this come out to be minus 5, 5, 5 and minus 5. And then in part B, I will plot these coordinates and then join them with a smooth curve. And this is how the graph looks like. For question 4, the scale factor of going from the first shape x to the second one y can be found by writing 16 times k, which is the scale factor, is equal to 40. So k is equal to 40 over 16, which is 5 over 2. So to find the length of d, I'm just going to multiply 12 times my scale factor, which will give me 30, and that's the length of dE. In part B, I just need to convert 525 centimeters squared into meters squared. If I'm going from centimeters to meters, I'm just dividing by 100. Because these are squared, I will divide by 100 squared, and the answer is 0 0.0525. Question 5 is a simple quadratic factorization, and the answer to this is x plus 4x minus 9. For question 6, let the probability of selecting mint be x. And to find x, I'm just going to add everything and equal it to 1. So 0 0.35 plus 0 0.32 plus x plus 0 0.12 should be 1. So x comes out to be 0 0.21. So probability of strawberry or mint is equal to 0 0.32 plus 0 0.21, which is equal to 0 0.53. Note that I didn't have to calculate the probability of mint. I could have subtracted 1 minus the other two probabilities and that would still give me 0 0.53. For question 7, if I add 6 plus 3 plus 2, this will give me 11 parts. So the number of games won is equal to 6 over 11 times 55, which is equal to 30. The number of games lost is 2 over 11 times 55, which is equal to 10. And if I subtract this, I get 20. And this is what I need to find. For part A, the highest common factor is the product of all the common factors to their lowest power. So I've got 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 3 times 7 to the power of 1. And this gives me 7, 8, 7, 5. For part B, the lowest common multiple is the product of all prime factors, common or not, to their highest powers. So I've got 3 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 4 times 7 to the power of 1 times 11 to the power of 1, which gives me 3, 
8.9.8.1.2.5. In part A, this number in standard form is 8.4 times 10 to the power of 5. And in part B, if I do this division, I'm going to get 6 divided by 8 is 0 0.75 times 10. And then I need to subtract powers of 10. So 7 minus minus 2 is 9. This is not in standard form. So I'll need to convert it. It becomes 7.5 times 10 to the power of 8. In question 10, I have a depreciation of 18%. This means that I have a multiplying factor of 82 over 100 or 0 0.82. So to find the value after three years, I'm gonna take the original value and multiply it by the multiplying factor to the power of three. This will give me a value of 82,705 euros. For question 11, to find the equation for L, I'll take two points on the line. For example, minus 2, 3, and 0, minus 1. Any two points will do, but I've chosen those two. To find the gradient, I will use the following formula. And if I substitute these numbers, I'm going to get 3 minus minus 1 over minus 2 minus 0, which gives me 4 over minus 2, which is equal to minus 2. So this is the gradient. Note that the y-intercept is this point here, minus 1. So the equation of this straight line is y equals minus 2x minus the y-intercept, which is minus 1. For question 12, in order to find A, B, I will first work with triangle B, C, and D and find the side B and D. And then I'll work with triangle A, B, and D to find A and B. For triangle B, C, and D, I will use the sine ratio, so sine of 32 is equal to B and D, which is the opposite over 3.1, which is the hypotenuse. So B, D is equal to 3.1 times sine of 32, which gives me 1.6427 and so on. And then I will work with triangle A, B and D. And now we'll use the cos ratio, so cos of 42 is equal to adjacent, which is B and D, over the hypotenuse, which is A and B. And if I rearrange, A and B is equal to 1.6427, and so on, over cos 42. And this will give me a value of 2.21 three significant figures. For question 13, I need to draw a cumulative frequency graph for this information. Note that this will be my X coordinates and the cumulative frequency will be the Y coordinates. I'll need to start from the lower category from the lower bound of the smaller category from 30. So this is how my graph will look like. And then I need to join the points either using a curve or line segments. I'll go with line segments. In part B, I need to find an estimate for the median. So I'll start by calculating N over 2. This is 100 over 2, so I need the 50th observation. So going to my graph, I will locate 
50 on the cumulative frequency axis, the vertical axis, and find the corresponding time from the x-axis. And the answer comes out to be about 58. For part C, I'll need to do the reverse. I'll need to find the cumulative frequency for a time corresponding to 72 minutes. And then I'm going to subtract this from 100, which is the total observation. So let's go to the graph, find 72 minutes and find the corresponding cumulative frequency. So the reading from the graph is 86. So I've got 100 minus 86 is equal to 14. And since I want probability, this will be 14 out of 100. You can simplify this one as 7 out of 50. For part A, I will split this into x to the power of 12, then to the power of 3 quarters, times y to the power of 8, everything to the power of 3 over 4, and then I will multiply the powers in each bracket, so I get x to the power of 9 times y to the power of 6. For part B, I will start by expressing everything as a power of 3. So 3 to the n equals 3 to the x over 3 squared to the power of y. Then I will proceed to multiply the two powers in the denominator. So 3 to the n equals 3 to the x over 3 to the 2y. Then since I have division, I will subtract the powers on the right hand side. So 3 to the n equals 3 to the x minus 2y. And I will finish off by equating the powers of 3. So n equals x minus 2y. For question 15, there are many ways to find angle DBC. I will proceed as follows, angle ABC is 90 degrees because it's an angle in a semicircle. The angle ABD is 49 degrees. That's half of 98 because angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Hence, the required angle is 90 minus 49, which is 41. So let's go and write this down. So A, B, C is equal to 90 degrees because angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Then I'll find A, B, D, which is 98 divided by 2, which is 49. And the reason is that angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. And finally, angle D, B, C is equal to 90 minus 49, which gives me 41. In question 16, I'm given that Y is inversely proportional to the square of X. And if I write this as a formula, I have Y equals K over X squared. And I'm going to use any pair of values to find the value of k. Now I will use 2 and 9, this pair here. So I've got 9 is equal to k over 2 squared. So 9 is equal to k over 4, which means that k is equal to 36. Now. I'll write the formula here as well, 36 over x squared. For part B, I will substitute y is equal to 144 and try and find x. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to get x squared is equal to 
36 over 144, which is 1 over 4. So x is equal to the square root of 1 over 4, which gives me 1 over 2. I'm only keeping the positive value because x is bigger than 0. For question 17, note that any term in the sequence is equal to the term number times the next one over 2. For example, these numbers are equal. And then the next number is always one more than the term number. So I'm going to extend my table all the way to the term number n and n plus 1. Now, if the term number is n, then the term of the sequence is n times n plus 1 over 2. And if the term number is n plus 1, the term of the sequence is n plus 1 times the next integer, which is n plus 2 over 2. And I need to show that the sum of these two terms is equal to a square number. To show that something is a square number, I need to show that it can be written as something to the power of 2. So let's start by adding these two terms, n, n plus 1 over 2, plus n plus 1, n plus 2 over 2. I can write this as a single fraction, so n, n plus 1, plus n plus 1, n plus 2. I will then proceed to expand the numerator. So I've got n squared plus n plus n squared plus 2n plus n plus 2 over 2. Let's simplify the numerator. I've got 2n squared plus 4n plus 2 over 2. I'm going to factorize the numerator. I'm going to take out the common factor of 2. So I've got 2n squared plus 2n plus 1 all over 2. I can cross out the 2s and I'm left with n squared plus 2n plus 1. And if I try and factorize this one, I will get n plus 1 squared, which is what I need to show. In part A, I will set the denominator equal to 0 and then solve this one to find the value that needs to be excluded from the domain, which is 3 over 4. In part B, to find fg of x, I will find f of x minus 5. This is equal to a fraction with numerator x minus 5. And then in the denominator, 4 times x minus 5 minus 3. And if I try to simplify, I will get x minus 5 over 4x minus 20 minus 3, giving me my final answer of x minus 5 over 4x minus 23. In part C, to find the inverse function, I will write y is equal to x over 4x minus 3, and then I will replace x with y and y with x. So I have x equals y over 4y minus 3, and I need to get y on its own. To do so, I will cross multiply. So 4xy minus 3x is equal to y. I need to collect the y terms on one side. So 4xy minus y equals 3x. Then I will take y as a common factor. And I have 4x minus 1 in the brackets. And to get rid of the brackets, I will just divide by it. And don't forget to write your answer at the appropriate space. In part D, I need to find an estimate for the gradient of the curve at the point where x equals minus 
0 0.5 it's this point here to do so i'll need to draw the tangent at that point take two points on the tangent and calculate the gradient so this is the tangent i have and i'm going to take the two end points now the left one has coordinates minus two five the other on the top has coordinates 1.325 and I will use this formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and if I substitute my values from above I get 25 minus 5 over 1.3 minus minus 2 which gives me 20 over 3.3 .3, and this comes out to be 6.06 .06, correct to three significant figures note the mark scheme accepts any answer from 5 to 7 In question 19, I'll start by using the area of the whole sector to find the radius. So here is the sector again. And the formula I'm going to use is 80 over 360 times pi r squared is equal to the given area. I'm going to cancel out the pi's. So r squared is 25 over 2 divided by 80 over 360, which is 225 over 4. So r is the square root of this number, which is 15 over 2, or 7.5. And then to find the perimeter, first I'm going to find the arc length, this one. And then I'll find the straight line A and B. Now the arc A, P, B can be found using the following formula. So arc length equals to 80 over 360 times 2 pi R. And my R is 15 over 2. And this will give me 10 over 3 pi. And now what is left is to find the length A and B. Now you can use, since you know the radius, which is 7.5, either the cosine rule or you can split this isosceles triangle into two right angle triangles and use that one. This is the method I will use. I'll split into two right angle triangles. Here is what I have. So using the sine ratio, sine of 40 equals to opposite, which is x over hypotenuse. So x equals to 7.5 times sine of 40. This will give me 4.82 dot dot dot. So the perimeter of the shape is 10 over 3 pi times twice 4.82 dot 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 and this will give me 20.1 to three significant figures for question 20 note that a is between 3.455 and 3.465 and b is between 6.25 and 6.35 now because i want the upper part of this expression i will need a large numerator and a low denominator which means i'm going to take the upper part of the numerator and note in the denominator i have subtraction and if i want my result to be small i'm going to take the lower bound of the first number minus the upper bound of the second number so this means that in order to get a 
large value for 6a, I'm going to take 6 times 3.465 over the lower bound of b, which is 6.25 minus the upper bound of a. And then if you do this calculation, it will come out to be 7.46. For question 21, I will work with the scale factor approach. Now, I have two shapes, A and B. The length scale factor is K. The area scale factor is k squared and we know the two areas 240 for a and 540 for b and the volume scale factor is k to the power of three i don't know the volume of a but i do know the volume of b i'm gonna use the areas to find the value of k now, k squared is equal to 540 over 240. And if you do k is equal to the square root of this ratio, k comes out to be 3 over 2. And then I'm going to take the unknown volume V times 3 over 2 to the power of 3 should give me 2025. So V is 2025 divided by 3 over 2 to the power of 3. And this will give me 600 centimeters cubed. In question 22, I need to complete the square. First, I'm going to write in descending powers of X. So I've got minus 2X squared plus 12X plus 5. I'll proceed to take out the common factor of minus 2 from the first two terms. So this will be x squared. And note, I need a minus here, 6x. So when I expand, the minus and the minus give me a plus. And then for the thing in the bracket, I will complete the square. So x squared minus 6x is equal to x minus 3 squared minus 3 squared. So x minus 3 squared minus 9 is the expression you get when you complete the square. So if I go back now, I'm going to have minus 2 square bracket, x minus 3 squared minus 9, close the square bracket, plus 5. I will then expand this square bracket only, and I get minus 2x minus 3 squared. The minus minus will give me a plus 18 plus 5. So this gives me minus 2x minus 3 squared plus 23. And if I write this in the correct format, I get 23 minus 2x minus 3 squared. In this question, I'm given that the total surface area is 360. This shape is made up of one square and four triangles. And I'll work out the area of one of the triangles. So total area is equal to area of the square base plus four times the area of a triangle so 360 is equal to 100 because it's the square of side 10 plus four times the area of a triangle so 260 is equal to four times the area so the area of one of the triangles is 65 Next, I'm going to work with one of the triangles, more specifically triangle ABC, which is the shaded triangle. I'm going to extract this triangle and I'm going to find its height 
using the area and then using Pythagoras theorem, I'm going to find AC. So using the area of the triangle, I have base times height over 2 is equal to 65. So 5H is equal to 65. So the height is 13. Now half the base is 5. So I can use Pythagoras theorem to find AC. So AC squared is equal to 13 squared plus 5 squared. So AC is the square root of 190. Four. Now that I have found AC, I will proceed and work with the square base in order to find OC. Here is the base, which I will extract. Now using Pythagoras, EC squared is equal to 10 squared plus 10 squared. So EC is equal to the square root of 200. Or if I simplify 10 square root of 2. Now OC is half of EC, which will give me 5 square root of 2. So finally now I can work with triangle a, O, C. This is a right angle triangle and I know two of its sides. So let's extract this. So cos of angle C is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So C is the inverse cos of this fraction and the answer I get is 59.5 to one decimal place. In this question I have a total of X marbles. The number of red is four. So the number of yellow marbles is X minus four. Now I'm going to draw a tree diagram for this question. Now since there are four red out of x, the probability of the first one being red is 4 over x. And the probability the first one is yellow is x minus 4 over x. Now um, given the probability that I select two yellow marbles, so I'm only interested in this product. Now, if the first one selected is yellow, then the number of yellow decreases by 1. So instead of x minus 4, I have x minus 5. But also the total number decreases by 1. So instead of x, I have x minus 1. And the product of these two should be 0 0.7 as stated in the question. So let's create an equation x minus 4 over x times x minus 5 over x minus 1 should be 0 0.7 or 7 over 10 as a fraction. Let's cross multiply 10 x minus 4 x minus 5 is equal to 7 x x minus 1. Let's expand 10 x squared minus 9 x plus 20 is equal to 7 x squared minus 7 x, 10x squared minus 90x plus 200 is equal to 7x squared minus 7x. And if I collect everything to one side, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 83x plus 200 is equal to 0. Now, I can either factorize this one or use the quadratic formula. If you factorize, you will get 3x minus 8 and x minus 25, which is 0. 
So either x is 8 over 3 or x is equal to 25. Now x is equal to the total number of marbles. x cannot be a decimal. So x has to be an integer and it is equal to 25.